At this point, we want to address a somewhat critical issue of the SESTA Key Vi Trust account. It is a major part of why people are involving themselves in this field of research. It's a critical aspect of people being able to free themselves from the system and go from the public to the private. Now, you've given me some information which I believe comes from the Vatican Law Book. Yes. Uh, specifically, I'm referring to Canon Law 2057, which pertains to the Sesta Key Vi Trust and how the Vatican is supposed to act or conduct themselves when they are approached by a person who is, in fact, leaving the system to go private. That's correct. The uh, Vatican, of course, is the VAT by CAN, which is the holder of all corporations. The Crown Corporation, any corporation on planet Earth, is incorporated with the Vatican as the holder of all corporate, corporate estates and all corporate trusts are held by the Vatican as an institution. The Vatican is not a person or anything, it's, it's just another huge big corporation. But it is the mother company holding all the other corporations. And obviously, this uh, Canon 2057, anybody can just Google that and look it up and you'll find heaps and heaps of references to it. And it's also off the Vatican website. Well, I might actually read to the viewers what Canon Law 2057 states, and then I might get your further opinions on the matter. Very interesting. Specifically, what it says is, quote, Any administrator or executor that refuses to immediately dissolve a Sesta Key Vi Trust upon a person establishing their status and competency is guilty of fraud and fundamental breach of their fiduciary duties requiring their immediate removal and punishment. Yes. Now, this is quite interesting because there's a particular word here that pops up which says is guilty of fraud and fundamental breach of the fiduciary duties. Now, let's forget about the fraud for now. The fiduciary duty means your interest need to be put in front of their own. So if, if somebody is my fiduciary, they've got to meet my needs before I can meet my own needs. They've got to look after me. That entails a sense of responsibility Absolutely. on their part towards Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yes. So, government or the, the private institution pretending to be a government, they took on the fiduciary duty and they usurped the original government that actually was a de jure government that exists, that did all of that for us. But as trustees of the trust, they've got a duty towards us. And everything that we are paying for all the time should be coming from the trust fund that was created, as with them as the trustees, to pay for all our bills, all our fines, all the licensing, all the taxes. It's not our obligation. Those are their bills that they need to pay, not us. But they made us the debtor in the system through the birth certificate fraud. And out of that came the surname, which is the debtor in the trust account, which is what all this writing of how to write your name, the live life claim, and this complete process is all about. So the trustee holds those fiduciary duties Absolutely. and responsibilities yes. towards you as a yes. person exiting the public system into the private. Absolutely. They hold that all the time, even if you don't exit the system from the private. But they, because of the role-playing in court that they do, the, the, the magistrate is your fiduciary. But he reverses the role and he makes us the trustee. You see, because when they ask you what is your name, and you say your name, they write your name down on the court records in full, all capitals, all uppercase typing, which is not you, that's the corporation, and that is that is the trick that has been done in the court. Now, that's been covered very well by Romley and by the Glossa Channel in the past. People can go back and re-look at that for those videos. This is just the, uh, the Sister KV Act itself, obviously, that still looks like this. This is off the England's uh, UK website. You can still look this one up. It's still legit. It's still standing. It's still valid, absolutely, 100%. And Section 4 is the interesting one. Uh, Section 4 says, if the supposed dead man proved to be alive, then the title is revested. Action for mean profits with interest. And this is where the Canon 2057 comes in and where the fraud comes in. Because these assets in trust, all the time that were held in trust, those assets are me and you. Our bodies, our corpses, our, our, our corporate entity has been held in trust as a bonded surety 
against which the currency in the system is being printed. So we are the collateral against the money that we spend all the time. We're it. We are the capital. And they traded upon our bodies and converted that energy into money that they profited from. They did stuff with that money without telling us about it and traded upon our trust accounts. The profits that they made from those accounts should have been be coming to us all the time as shareholders in the global estate. The minerals from the Australian mines should be come back into Australian soil, do they? No. The garbage that gets exported to China and that we bought back, that we buy back from China as, as newly produced goods, why don't we produce it here? That is the whole system, is that you've got a foreign entity similar to a parasite sitting on top of Australian soil sucking it dry. But we are responsible for that, we created that, we consented to that, but we can change it. We can take that contract and rescind it, cancel the contract, create a new trust, and in that case uh, we will be looking at the next document which is very interesting with the steps of how to do that.